Mickey. Thank you very much. Did you lose your mommy, little boy? Mm. Do you need to get your diaper changed today? <laughs> Come on by, I'll sign your blankie for you. Look at that, the Australian turtle. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah. Give me your pride. Yeah, that's Hop good. along, kangaroo. Kangaroo meat. I still, you know, feel like Mark Scaife and Craig Lowndes, these guys that, you know, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't got to their level, even though I was beating them on the racetrack. It's just funny how your head thinks that way. And then I come here and I do the same thing again. And I get to a level where I look up to these guys, you know, with Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, these guys will go down in history as some of the best drivers in NASCAR of all time. And I'm racing against them. You know, it's humbling to race against them because they can, you know, put a whipping on you pretty good. But to be in that level, uh, you know, on a daily basis and be rubbing up against them and getting to know them, it's, it is special and it's intimidating and all those kind of things. But at the same time, you've got to forget all that and race them as well. One of the good decisions I've made was choosing the time to come. There was a fresh drive for diversity in NASCAR. I mean, they actually have a drive for diversity program where they're trying to get minority groups into NASCAR. There was a big push for open wheel guys coming into the sport, guys from outside North America coming in. But I think a lot of these guys that have come in from open wheel or from premier racing around the world, they get dropped into a high level, higher than what I got dropped into, and they just sink. You know, they just don't have a chance to really get their head around what it's all about. Very different form of racing, different lifestyle, um, different culture on how to make these cars go and how to finish a race. And so I saw those guys getting spat out of the system thinking, man, you know, I've got to make sure I don't fall into that trap. And so I just tried to stay very, very low key and just, just earn my way through the ranks. Marcus has definitely established himself as a cup driver here. But again, it was the big picture understanding that he had. Uh, you see some young guys or rookies come in and uh, not offer the respect that those guys like Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon deserve. Uh, Marcus was very cognizant that he needed to earn their respect by the way he raced them on the racetrack, give and take. And uh, he's done that, so he's earned the right to be there. And certainly it seems like his peers embrace him now. He's, he's part of the culture. Up front, Robbie Gordon by Ambrose. Who goes back on him? There it is. Couldn't see that coming, could you? You know, uh, I've learned from my mistakes too in the past where I've said things that have inflamed the situation. Um, they have created a grey area that, you know, people can interpret one way or another. I mean, it was pretty black and white. You know, Robbie took me out because um, he was mad at himself, mad at NASCAR and mad at the world. It had nothing to do with me personally, so I just walked away. And I still do that right now. I walk away and just let it be. I mean, Robbie is a unique guy. I'm racing against him every week now, so, I mean, why carry over? something from the past that long ago and, and per perhaps start a new feud or conflict that's going to, you know, cause trouble. You knew that there was going to be an attack from Robbie Gordon in the 50s. Yeah, 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 I'm devastated. You know, I promised myself when I came to NASCAR that I've been given such a chance that even if I have the worst day, I'm not going to be mad. And I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed, you know. I feel bad for Kingsford Ford, my, my team, you know, it's just uh, this close, you know. An amazing attitude for a guy who's had the heartbreak of the day. I am so committed to not being labelled a road course experienced veteran road ring or whatever you want to call them. You know, I've come here to race ovals and I want to be good on the ovals and I want to make a career out of oval racing. And we've got to string together not just top 10 speeds or qualify in the top 10, we've got to deliver those top 10 results. And I'm getting closer, the team's getting closer, we're gelling as one, I think it's coming. And I want to be known as Marcus Ambrose, the NASCAR driver, a complete driver, you know, and not many people have been able to make that transition. He's definitely learning the discipline. For me, about a year and a half ago, I saw him start changing lines throughout a race. You know, the cars don't handle perfectly throughout a tire run, and the great drivers are able to look around on the racetrack for grip and uh, changed their lines to be as competitive as possible throughout a run. And the light bulb came on for him on that about a year and a half, 14 months ago, and, and uh, he's really progressing fast now. Uh, I'm racing every weekend. Every race spends about $500,000 US to turn up and compete. If you crash out in the first lap, 
I've got my own career to worry about. I've got the sponsors to worry about and the people that put their hand up to give me the chance to drive that car. Their jobs are on the line. And when you drive one of these cup cars, it's not about, uh, you know, I just have to make it to the finish and I'll do okay. Every lap, you've got to run to the very edge. It's a very fine line between success and disaster. Very fine line. Oh! oh, 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 oh. Marcus Ambrose could kind of break on the outside. He's going to lose a spot. I guess all my friends from home will tell you I was pretty much a pushover in anything else but racing. You know, I wasn't, I'm not like, I'm not out there as a person, really. I'm not aggressive, I'm, I'm passive uh, when it comes to just living life in general, but when I strap my helmet on, I change, you know, and, and I am in control. And I'm at this point in my career where I really have to keep toning it down. You know, I've got to tell myself every time I strap in that race car, every time I get ready to race, just keep a lid on it. Don't, don't get out of control here, uh, especially in Sprint Cup Series, because there are a thousand ways to not finish the race. Um, and over-aggression is, is a primary concern when you're out there of, of, of damaging your car early, getting yourself in trouble, putting yourself in bad positions, just being too aggressive. So I'm learning to control it, um, and more in this form of racing than any other. Really in, in, in V8 Supercar, it was like, get it done for three or four laps, and then it was control. Where here, it's really control up until the last, you know, 20, 30 laps. Marcus Ambrose runs in third. Um, the feeling I've got is that this is such a, a high level, it takes so much intensity and, and commitment um, that I'm, I'm suffering as a dad, I'm suffering as a husband, I'm suffering as an Australian, you know, and so there'll come a time where maybe, you know, when this is finished, I may just need to stop and just, just change course. I personally don't think he'll ever race in Australia again. I think he, if he comes back, he'll buy a farm in Tasmania and you'll never see him again. But um, that's, uh, time, time will tell, but um, I, I, I can't see it, no. Depends how long this lasts, but I might say that, you know, if I can survive here for three, four years, um, it may be enough. It may satisfy that, that desire in my stomach and, and I'll be able to, you know, walk away a happy man. This hat was actually a competition between uh, Jody Gashek, the owner of the 47, and myself. We've got this little duel going between the two cars, and the loser each week has to wear this hat somewhere, sometime. Oh, I actually won oh. this week, but she refused to come down here in the crowd. So hey, oh. I'm actually throwing her to the wolves right now. Have you, have you ever got Chip Warren, your, your, your PR guy and team manager, to get him to do it? Well, he's going to even understand what I'm trying to tell him. So <laughs> I've got no chance. Hey, he used to work for NASCAR. What do you expect? Yeah. <laughs>